What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hilt, and we're have, today we're going to do another episode of Learning Dust. Now, in today's episode, we're going to use what I call a heavy assault. That's a heavy frame fitted with a light weapon. Um, and this is something that a new player, it, it's very attainable. Now, heavy weapons are probably out of your early skill point um, capabilities, but fitting out a heavy militia frame with the weapon of choice um, can go a long way to increasing your survivability. Now as you can see here, all of the mil militia heavy frames have the same exact fitting layout. Their CPU and power grid differ, but as you notice they have a lot of CPU and power grid. This is to accommodate heavy weapons, but since you're not using that, you'll have a lot of fitting for other things. Now I've chosen to follow along racial lines here for all of the weapons and as you can see, I've fitted each one with an enhanced shield extender and an enhanced armor repairer. Now the shield extender is to get a little bit more buff, but also because it's probably a skill a new players have. And the repairer is to uh, have some sustainability. So without further ado, let's get at it. Um, I'm going to try to switch between all of the suits during this match so you can get a feel for their various flavors. So why would you want to use a heavy assault? Well, the most obvious answer is the very high hit point totals. You can see there I didn't have a lot of buffer modules, but I had a lot of hit points. Now, your hit point totals will be slightly less than this because I'm using my main character who has maximum armor and shield skills, but it'll still be pretty high. So what I've chosen to do here is use a vehicle and on that vehicle is a scanner. One of the weaknesses of a heavy frame is that it doesn't have very good passive scan capabilities. So you're constantly going to be a little blind to your surroundings because of the fact that you can't rely on your passive scanners. If you're lucky, you'll see other heavies. But most of the time you won't see anybody on your scanner unless you're looking directly at them. So while the scanners on vehicles aren't that great, they are um, usable. You won't see scouts um, and medium frames that have chosen to use dampeners. So take a look right here. I'm out in the open, but I can outrange this guy. He's a heavy with a heavy machine gun. But... And so he can't hit me with anything but his sidearm. So I'm staying at range, trying to use my all my options trying as well to separate myself a bit from the other light suit who's actually more of a danger to me at this point and keep them separated by using that supply depot now he switched out to a light suit to try to hit me with a weapon but I'm able to use that bar there to block his shots now you notice I took quite a bit of armor damage but due to the fact that I have an enhanced armor repairer I'm already at full armor this is a pretty significant advantage, and while for the light and medium suits, I highly recommend buffer as a new player, when you choose to go with the heavy suit, it's definitely worth it to have some means of personal repair. Because you already have a very significant buffer, and you need some sustainability. You need to be able to repair that and get back in the fight. And due to the fact that you're not running a heavy machine gun, you won't attract as much logistics or repair logic capability as you otherwise would. Um, and so having your own means of repair is pretty significant. So you could choose to use um, an armor repairer, or if you're using the shield tankers, you can rely on the buffer that they have, or use some type of um, shield Re, regenerate uh, energizer or to increase how quickly your shields regenerate. So I'm having to look around quite a bit here. I'm monitoring. I'm watching my angles. I'm trying to be very uh, aware physically because I can't rely on my scanner. So I'm having to look a lot. So the scanner inability to passive scan is just one of the weaknesses of the heavy suit. The other weakness is that you're generally pretty slow. You have slow side-to-side -side strafing movement and forward and back. 
your slow sprint speed, and low uh, stamina, total stamina. So this is a pretty significant downside. It means that you're, in addition to not being able to see what's around you, you're going to be easier to hit out in the open. You can't jump as much, you can't strafe side to side as much. It takes you longer to run from place to place. So using cover effectively is even more important when you're a heavy. One thing that you can do to mitigate that that you saw at the beginning was use an LAV or a vehicle of some kind to cross the open distances where you're more, most vulnerable and get into areas where you can use cover. So right here, I wasn't quite sure where that came from, but I was once I looked around, I was pretty sure that that guy, um, my the blueberry, took out whoever was attacking me. So I didn't search very much. But you notice, I think I took two shots from a shotgun, and it only hit my shields. Now one of them probably missed. I wasn't paying too much attention, but as you can see, a lot of survivability in the right circumstances. If you get out in the open, you're easier to hit because you're slower, you have a bigger hitbox, and scouts are just your natural bane. Cloaked shotgun scouts especially. Now the other thing you'll have to watch out for is the heavy machine gun. Heavies. If you're in close quarters, you just won't be able to, to out tank the damage that, and the DPS that they can do. So I switched it out to the rail rifle here to give myself a bit more range. I know this guy's trying to use his turret, so I'm trying to keep things in between myself and him. Now he's using a small railgun. One thing I know about the railgun is that they don't handle um, shooting over things very well. So this railing looks open, but to the railgun, a lot of its shots are going to deflect against some type of thing. So part of the, knowing that I can engage this guy is knowing a little bit about the game. So I want to go somewhere else now and I don't want to run there. I'm too slow, I'm too exposed, so I'm using a vehicle. Now if you if you decide to go with the heavy and you like the heavy machine gun, you want to be that just absolute DPS destroyer, an LAV is also a great choice to continue to use. While I wish they would change the the nature of it a bit. It does mean that you can get into close to your enemies, see a lot of them with your scanner. And notice that guy was doing the same thing as I was. I just landed more shots than him. You can use the scanner to help you find targets. And then using the heavy machine gun, you'd pop out at close range, you destroy them, you hop, pop back in, you get away. Now I'm going to abandon here because I'm stuck. And this guy is probably going to destroy you. I saw quite a number of swarms. Unfortunately, I just am not quite able to take him out before he disappears. And I'm going to go look for him, but my odds of finding him are pretty low. And that's just because I can't see him on passive scan. He's much faster than I am. And so he's probably long gone by now. But I'm going to look anyway. Check if there's an uplink or some other piece of equipment. I've got these rocks here to help uh, provide a bit of cover if I get into trouble or if somebody engages me. So as far as the tactics are concerned, that's about it. Um, as a heavy, you're slower. It, it'll help if you don't stack armor plates and you use uh, armor repairers. But uh, then again, you have to pick your targets. You can't go toe to toe with uh, other HMG heavies unless you're at range and you have the range advantage. You'll want to uh, be constantly looking around you because you can't rely on your passive scanners and stay out of the open as much as possible because you're slow and you have a big hitbox. So that the, the hit points that you do have, while a good buffer, can disappear really quickly to the likes of a uh, heavy machine gun, plasma cannon, shotgun. So I'm choosing intentionally to stay out of the city for that reason. I know they've got shotgunner scouts. Uh, and I know they're playing in the city because it's their advantage. I don't have the DPS of a heavy machine gun, so I'm playing like an assault character would. I'm sticking kind of to the fringes, controlling external points, not trying to get in close quarters fights with everything, just trying to use range to my advantage. So here I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy again. The rail rifle in close range isn't a perfect sidearm, but it's going to have to do. 
And right there was a little bug that often happens with the rail weapons where you, you switch out to them, you pull the trigger and nothing. It doesn't register your trigger pull. So you have to release the trigger and pull again. And that's why there was that big pause there. But So once again, my shields are back up. Now, the Kaldari suits, let's talk a little bit about the racial differences. Now, they follow the differences that you've seen in other suits. So the Kaldari and the Mimitar are primarily shield tankers, although they still have a large armor buffer. In addition, the Mimitar, while not being as good at shields, is faster, which means faster strafe speed, faster movement speed, and better. Uh, you can better enhance that if you choose to use um, some type of complex kinetic stabilizer. The Amar and Galente are strong armor tankers with the... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure on the speed. I know there's a, a slight difference in speed between the two. But uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not quite sure which one's faster. So I'll switch it out to the Amar here. If you remember, high DPS weapons. He's trying to shoot me, and he got a shot off there, but you notice a lot of his shots are kind of connecting against the railing. This is something I wish CCP could look into and fix, but um, at this point, it's not a huge deal. If you're using that tactic of a LAV railgun sniper skirmisher, you just kind of have to know you can't shoot over railings, even the ones that look empty. So I think I'm going to go take his car and head over to Delta, or some, some other external point. I've been at Charlie quite a bit now. So... Um, so, like I was saying, if you choose to go with Amar and Galente, they've, uh, they have, they're strong armor tankers. I think the Amar is slightly faster and has slightly better fitting, but generally speaking, even with no fitting skills, you're going to be able to fit just about everything you want. Now, heavy slots don't have an equipment, so when it comes to using, picking your weapons, you'll want to be cautious about using weapons that uh, consume a lot of ammunition. That or you'll need to play around supply depots. Now right here I heard that uh, the swarms going, but and I'm trying to find him, but I think he cloaked up or jumped behind a hill real fast. And so I was able to take him out before he completely destroyed the LAV I was using. Now right here I realize I'm kind of in a bad situation. I've got quite a number of individuals over there. So I'm going to use the LAV as cover, try to take a couple of them out since they're out in the open. Now that's a little bug that sometimes occurs with the Grambler rifle where it'll just start charging up. You can switch out weapons or hit reload to... Um, kill the charge that it's trying to. So I try to slam the heavy here, but I miss. Now, he's a heavy with logistics, so I don't really, at this point, want to go and engage inside, and I'm trying to kill the logistics to, to reduce um, the effectiveness of that heavy. If you can, definitely go for the Logi first. As a logistics player myself, it's uh, somewhat unfortunate, but... It's just the nature of the beast. That heavy is dangerous, but he's made more so by the fact that he has somebody repairing him, increasing his sustainability. So I'm going to play kind of a skirmish role here, stick to the outskirts. I know there's some enemy. These guys are shooting at somebody. I don't really want to go down into Charlie due to the fact that there's that heavy there who, in those close quarters, can really out DPS me. He can eat through my buffer really quickly. So once again, keep that in mindset. If you're trying out the heavy assault, you're going to need to play like an assault character. You're going to need to look out for yourself a little bit more, which is why I suggested sustainability. And uh, play on the outskirts, not let uh, shotgunners and HMGs uh, not play within their optimal range. So... I hope you've learned something. I hope you give it a try. Uh, it's also a good step if you're headed towards the heavy HMG wielding death machine. As always, my name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.